like, what's different? I'm like, you're not wearing your glasses. That's what's different. Yeah, I'm not wearing them. I have a headache. <laughs> Aw, how you feeling? Uh, we're tired. Yeah. We're close. Yeah. yeah. How are you? I'm good. Right now I'm good. I'm still on. I just got done with part of my cardio. So I'm still on kind of like a cardio high, you know, ask me again in like an hour <laughs> once we're done with this. <laughs> are you still on uh, 55 minutes? 60. 60. 60 now. Me yep. too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, yeah. So before we go too far into this, hi guys, we're at episode 10. <laughs> this is episode 10 going into olympia week which is pretty cool and um yeah. you know you, jordan and i were were uh texting back and forth yesterday was it yesterday i think it was yesterday yeah. <laughs> and we're like so today's topic is going to be essentially based around the don't be, be a bikini bitch which why don't you explain that a little bit since that was yours <laughs> drew's sitting right here i haven't even told him what our um topic is today right drew our yeah. topic today is don't be a bikini bitch so Drew coined this term um, with me, um, which we call, you know, like when you're kind of getting close to show or when you're in the middle of a prep and you just kind of start like getting in your head a little bit, you know, and you start kind of questioning everything and, you know, you have those prep goggles on and you might be lean, but you're not seeing it or the scale's not dropping and you're getting in your head about it and actually causing more stress. So the scale's not going to go anywhere. And simply now Drew says, don't be a bikini bitch um, because we tend just to get, we're female. We just get, you know, a little bit, you know, in our heads and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so Sean and I were going back and forth yesterday. We were talking about Sean and mm -hmm. how she's looking at herself and how she's starting to kind of get in her head a little bit or just the way that you're kind of interpreting your data and whatnot. And I said, mm -hmm. all right, well, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you what my husband says. Don't be a bikini bitch right now. Get those, <laughs> get those prop goggles off and, you know, trust your coach. And that's where you really have to kind of take that back seat. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we're going to go into some of that. We're going to go into kind of where we are, both of us at, at prep stuff, and then just kind of dispel some of the rumors and things like that, too, that you hear a lot about bikini competitors, you know, how we're not real athletes and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, let's go into that a little bit. So um, you mentioned you're on Benadryl and stuff like that right now. What happened with the, you said you got a rash? Yeah, no clue. So we woke up, uh, we went to uh, Clash over the weekend in Orlando. And then I woke up on Friday morning and just woke up, got out of bed. I hit a new low that morning. Everything was fine. And then about 10 minutes later, I was just brushing my teeth and started to get like really hot, like on my like elbows. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Just kept brushing my teeth. And then all of a sudden I started to see some red coming up like my face and behind my ears. And then all of a sudden my entire face was red. And uh, Drew was... Um, checking in some clients over at clash and i walked out and i was like i'm i'm scared and i mm. never complain so drew yeah. knows when i say i something's wrong or i'm hurting or i don't feel good he knows that uh it's something's wrong yeah. um so i was in the, he's in the middle of checking his athlete and he's like what's going on like I'm like, I know, I don't know, like what's happening. So I started to take a video of it for Jamie. He dismisses the athlete. He comes in, he's like, you have something going on. Like it's all over your back right now. We didn't know. We didn't know if it was the sheets or anything like that. Um, he had Benadryl on him. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Right. So took some of that. Um, I ended up posting about it on social and a bunch yeah, of nurses uh, reached out and they were like, hey, take Benadryl for receptor one of allergies, but then also take Pepsid C for receptor two of allergies. So okay. thank you, Ashley Bowden. I called her. I knew she was coming up that night for check-in. She bought both and brought them up to me. So I took it that night, not knowing if I was maybe sleeping on sheets or detergents yeah. or something like that. You know what everybody does. What have you changed in your routine? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I, am, I am a robot. <laughs> Everything is the same. So I thought it was the sheets. However, this morning I woke up, brushing my teeth again, doing the same thing and started to get hot on my elbows again. And I'm like, what is going on? The same exact rash. I took a video for, for Jamie again this morning. So I took a, a half Benadryl this morning, yeah. but man, it kicks my butt. It kicks, kicks my butt. So I don't know. Yeah. The only thing that Drew just actually just mentioned this, maybe it's my toothpaste. We just got a new toothpaste. Okay. That's, but other than that, everything's the same so well, i was I gonna really mention know. too like i don't know it does have you ever done a niacin flush does it feel like that i know what niacin is and i know what yeah. the the feeling is yes mm -hmm. it does feel like that but i'm not taking anything with niacin in it what kind um, of are you are you eating any like 
Are you eating tuna or anything like that? I no? eat chicken and rice for all five meals, literally. Chicken, rice, Weird. sodium. <laughs> I, had that, I had something like that happen. It's funny because it's actually happened um, at Olympia when we, in Vegas. This was my 30th birthday, so it's over 10 years ago. But I brought my food with me. Okay. And I had it um, like freezer packed, you know? Yeah. So over the course of the, the week, I could eat it as it went along. But I think it started to go bad a little bit. And it was like... I think it was chicken. If I remember correctly, it was chicken and it was tuna. And I ate one of the packets and my whole body flushed red from the oh. niacin that was in like the, like it must've been coming out because it was going bad or whatever it was. You know what I mean? But that's what it was from is from the, it was from whatever it was I was eating. It was the, I believe it was the tuna. I believe it was the tuna. So I was wondering maybe you had some bad protein or something like that. Yeah. And again, it's like, I just wake up out of bed you know, and it's like 10 minutes hmm. later. So I don't, I don't know. It's some, definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on. Um, it's definitely not something that was in Orlando. It's something that I brought home or that I'm huh. doing, doing. So I got to really pay attention to, I guess, my morning routine and kind of do things in blocks, you know, like wake up, brush my teeth, take my morning medicine, wait, see, yeah, see what changes. happens. Yeah. yeah. So, huh. Other Crazy. than that, though, everything's good. You know, we're just we're uh, today's the last day of depletion. So today was supposed to be supposed to be last day of 60 minutes and last day of some really low calories. Um, tomorrow, she wanted me to do 45 minutes. She always tells me the day before what how much cardio to do. Because by the time that she responds to my check in, I usually have my cardio all done. So tomorrow's supposed to be 45 minutes and maybe starting to feed tomorrow. So hopefully we'll start okay. to, to feed. And we're kind of just really copying and pasting what we did for Hurricane. Um, it seemed to yeah. work. That was my best look. And um, we'll uh, try to try to repeat that process. Are you starting at the same like like weight and measurements and all stuff that this week as you were for Hurricane? I'm tighter, actually, okay. then. Um, and it's funny because... This is the week that I had the ghost period last month. Yeah. And I am having some fluctuations with water and um, okay. sodium. But I got an IV bag yesterday too. But I was wondering if maybe these rashes and things that I'm getting, maybe that's tied to some hormonal changes uh -huh. or ghost period. I am having some breakouts on my face and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you know, just something you just got to keep. Yeah. Well, that's just something, you know, that's the thing. It's like people always think that you can sit down and plot out your preps and stuff, but stuff always happens. It's different every time. Even, even though you control everything that you can control, it doesn't matter. Anything like this could happen and you're like, okay, well, we just got to roll with it. Got to, got to roll with it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think at oh. this point, people think I'm like a pathological, like so she just keeps creating something before her show date, which is really kind of why I posted the rash because yeah. I'm, like, I'm not, like, I'm, I, I swear to God. God, I swear to God, I am not making this shit up. I get sick. I get COVID. I get rashes. I don't know what I'm doing to myself seven days out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm, the only thing I'm concerned about is like I told you is potentially getting my period. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. So I went on this, like this whole Google, like bunny hole thing this last weekend. Like I showed you the, yeah, are you going to talk um, about that? Whatever it is. So I can't even pronounce the name of the, of the drug, but it's a drug that you can actually get um, prescribed from your doctor um, to help you delay your period. So I started looking into it and I'm like, you know, maybe this would be a good idea because then I can just take it. it what it does is it keeps your progesterone level high because what happens is when you get your period, your progesterone level drops and then your uterine lining sheds and that's when you get your period. Right. So taking the, this pill three times a day, you start it three days before your expected period and you continue to take it until you're done with whatever it is you're doing, whether you're going on vacation or whatever. And then once you come off of the pill, then within about three days, your period will start because your hormone levels go back to what it normally should be. So I was like, oh, this might be a good idea. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but the more that I researched it and the more I looked at like um, anecdotal evidence of people that have done it and things like that, it definitely works but one of the side effects can be fluid retention. So I'm just like, worried about well, that. what's the point? <laughs> it's like, if, if the, the whole point of skipping my period is that I don't have those kinds of symptoms, but if those kinds of symptoms are still going to come, I don't care. Just, you know, let's just get through the period. Right. So, um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to get the prescription. Um, my cycle is due to start on Monday after Hawaii. So, um, I'm going to allow my body just kind of go through its normal processes. Um, if everything happens on time and how it's supposed to, then I won't have any symptoms on Hawaii because I'll be a couple of days removed from my period actually starting and I'll be through all of my symptoms by the time I get to the day for Japan. 
Um, if my body doesn't go according to, according to cycle, because it can do that once you get to be super lean and things like that, I'm going to play it by ear. So basically what I told Jamie was, is, um, if we get to, you know, like Friday of the week of Japan and I haven't gotten my period yet, then I'm going to start taking the pills. Okay. Uh, because what I don't want to happen is I don't want to start pulling water, retaining water on Saturday and then Japan is Sunday and then I'm screwed. You know what I mean? Right. So at Be least proactive, right. At, at least at that point, you know, if I start, you know, retaining water, like we talked about before, I can take diuretics or whatever going to Japan. So, um, so I'm just going to let my body do what it's supposed to do. Who knows? Maybe I won't get it at all because I'll be lean. Who knows if, I, if I'll get bloating at all, may not get bloating at all because I'm lean, you know, who knows? So rather than screw with it, I'm just going to see what happens. And then, like I said, if we get to the point where it's like Friday of the week after Hawaii, between Hawaii and Japan, then I'll, I'll make the decision if I'm going to take the, take the pills or not to okay. wait. So at least I have you already talked to your doctor and everything? Really yeah, I've got the prescription. Yep, i got the awesome. prescription coming. Awesome. Already, it's really easy to get the prescription. Like you can get it online. So oh, like it's super easy. Um, so yeah, so I'll go pick that up and everything like that. And that way, like I said, I'll at least have it. So if I decide to go that route, I can, but at the same time, um, you know, just like anything else, there's nothing that's, that, that you, it's going to happen this way. You know what I mean? Like you just don't know. So I, I'm going to have it in case. And if I decide to go that direction, I will, but if not, then I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone and let, let nature take its course and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, at least just be prepared, especially with you going yes. into another country, like you just have Correct. everything on you, you know, you'll right. have your, I think you said you were going to bring some expel and then yep. maybe some mm -hmm. dandelion tea, like just have yep. that stuff with you. And stuff. then you could always start small and ramp it up if you need to. Yep. And the other part of that too is I don't know, I don't think I have a bathtub in, in my hotel room in Japan, which I like to take Epsom salt baths. So I don't think so because those rooms are just so free and small. <laughs> so it just is what it is. Like there's just no way around that. So I'll figure out something. What I have done, what I did in New York last year is a foot soak. You can do an Epsom salt foot soak. Okay. Um, so it's the same kind of thing. It'll help the detox. I don't find it works as well as the bath. But it still is the same concept. You just soak your feet in the, in the magnesium and the, and the Epsom salts and stuff, and then it'll help you to kind of drop some of that fluid and things like that. It's actually probably better. That way you're not dropping too much. Maybe you have like yeah. a little bit more control over it. Yeah. That, and then, you know, something else I did too for New York was I went and got a lymphatic massage. So, yes. you know, those work really well too. So that helps. Very well. Um, so just little things like that. And um, going back to, so when we were texting about, you know, my weight and stuff like that, like... I was just feeling a little bit inflamed and stuff at that point when we were talking. And then today I was, I've hit my a new low weight today. So now I'm like five pounds from my stage weight, you know? So I woke up this morning, uber lean. And it was just because I, you know, I'd done all that last night. I did an Epsom salt bath and got the inflammation out and all that kind of stuff. And like, so I got up this morning and I was like, holy crap, like my hamstrings were, were there and all that kind of stuff, like way leaner than I was the day before. Like visually it's noticeable that you can see that I'm different. Even, you know, even from yesterday, I'm different than what I was, but you know, you look back at like Thursday and it's like a two or three pound difference from Thursday. So it's like, you're it's seeing like, the changes in your photos. Yeah. 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 Sure. And I was like, holy Jesus. <laughs> I was like, okay. And this goes back to the, don't be a bikini bitch kind of thing, because you just have to kind of follow your plan because it's, it's going to flip like that. You know, and if I had gone and tried to be like, do something stupid or crazy or whatever, who knows what would have happened? You know, I finally got a couple of really good nights of sleep. I went and got the raw sleep supplement again. I started taking that again two nights ago. My sleep improved, has improved the last two nights. Um, so stuff like that. Um, my husband and I went and did this um, haunted haunted trail thing. How was so it? Was, it was it was actually really good. They're like, that's the best twenty five dollars we've ever spent. <laughs> really good it's just in a, in a field so if you've never been to virginia before virginia is very um farm land there's a lot of historical land you know if you, you think back like america really started here in virginia like all of the battlegrounds the history, are here yeah. all that kind of stuff so um so there's a lot of that here there's a lot of places there's a lot of haunted places and things like that so um you know this place this was just a field it's, a, it's an abandoned farm it used to be a farm it's not a farm anymore it's an abandoned farm and these these high school kids i think they do it for like a like um fundraiser for their school kind of school. thing set up this whole which huge, is awesome yeah this whole huge thing and the kids are all like the scary creatures in the in the woods and stuff so it is it is freaking like 
that's really jump cool. scares. Like it's it was crazy. I was like, oh my god, like. Um, so I, you know, you get tense walking through this and the whole thing takes about 15 to 20 minutes to walk through the whole thing. So it's pretty intense and you're in the middle of the woods and there's no lights. It's just the crazy flashing stuff and everything, you know, so things jumping out at you every two seconds. So anyway, so I had worked legs that day. (laughs) And so as we're walking through, like, I'm so tense, right? Like I can feel my legs like seizing up, you know, that like, like you get sore, but then you're also depleted. So it's like, you can just feel your whole body getting tense, right? Yes. So we went through that whole thing. And when we left, um, we went to go watch The Exorcist. We went to to go see a movie. And so it was like about a... (laughs) about a 45 minute drive you know from the from the field to the movie theater i got out of the car at the movie theater and my whole butt was like sore like like to the point where like i was like oh my god it hurts to walk <laughs> like it was bad i was you like felt like he just did a leg workout <laughs> yes i was like oh my god i was like what did i do in the woods like seriously what did i do <laughs> I know. that's what you did that's what I your know, butt for real so <laughs> that's exactly what it was so I was like, oh man. And like the next day I woke up and I was still tight. Like I'm stretching and rolling out on the, you know, the yoga wheel and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh my God. So I was, that was the day we were texting and I was feeling inflamed and all this junk. And I was just like, okay. So like I said, I'm like, I just got to take my time and like relax tonight. So when I did that last night, like I said, I felt a thousand times better when I got up this morning and I was like, oh, like my, my left glute is still a little sore. <laughs> I need to take a page from your book. I drank glutes yesterday and I, that's how me, I was all night last night. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like aching. And then I woke up this morning, Drew's super sore too. We are like, okay, we need to pull back mm-hmm. on intensity a little bit today. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I was like, oh God. So I have my, cause I have my rest day scheduled for tomorrow because, um, so this is another story. <laughs> so- oh boy. So I was supposed to get my Botox touched up on Friday, right? Yeah, you were super excited about that. I was. I planned my whole day around it because you know if you get Botox, like you can't train afterwards. You can't do cardio afterwards. You have to do it all beforehand. So, I, you know, and I'm the person that I like to do my cardio at night. So I did all of my stuff in the morning to get it done. It only takes me 45 minutes to get to the doctor's office to get my treatments done. It took me over an hour and a half. And I'm on the phone (laughs) Like my GPS jumped from, from 45 minutes up to an hour and a half while I'm on the phone. And so I called them, I called them and I said, listen, I'm going to be about 15 minutes late for my appointment. And then, and, um, they're like, okay, that's fine. So uh, I'm still in the car. So I'm still driving. I'm still going. And I'm, it's like, it's my, it's, I'm past the 15 minutes past my appointment time. And they call me and I'm like, yeah, I'm like five minutes down the road. Like literally I was five minutes down the road at that point. And they're like, well, we close at four o'clock. It was it was three forty five at that point. They're like, we Ugh. close at, at four o'clock, and we need at least fifteen minutes to do your treatment and get you in here and all that kind of stuff. I was like, I'm literally five minutes down the road. I was like, you can't wait five minutes. And like the and I felt bad. Like I know it's not their fault, but I was so frustrated. I mean, my, I was in my car for an hour and a half, and I couldn't. And they couldn't take me. I'm like, you were five minutes away, and then they still had ten minutes. They could have done I know. it. That's really well, frustrating. And, and, and I felt bad. Like it's, and again, it's not her fault. I was already 15 minutes late, but I, what I wish had happened is like when I called and said, Hey, I'm going to be 15 minutes late. They would have said like, if you're any more than that, we can't take you. Correct. Then and they would have known. been like, okay, well then let me mitigate this and see if it's worth, like if, if I, if I'm still looking at my GPS, I'm going to be even later. I was like, then I can turn around and go home. You know, it's not a big deal. We can reschedule, whatever. But they didn't tell me that. So that's why I got so upset. And I'm sitting in my car, literally trying not to cry because I just spent an hour and a half in the car getting there, got there. And then I have to take an hour and a half back home yeah. and not even get the treatment done. Yeah. And I was like, I would, I would have cried. I definitely would have cried. I, I not even a lie. I did share shed a couple of tears at the at the at the gas station. I'm not even a lie. I did. <laughs> I was hey. just like, oh god, I was. Those so are frustrated. the those are the things when you're this deep in prep yeah. that can just really throw you. Yes. You know, and it's like so in prep, we don't get a lot of moments where we're like excited about something, and sometimes yeah. getting your Botox done, it's like, oh, you know, it's just gonna make me feel good, and that's yep. something to get you ready for your show, and it's yep. like. Ugh. And I had you know, time something you were looking forward to. Like I had, like I was like, okay, I called two weeks ahead of time to make the appointment. I was like, this is perfect because I'll have like two weeks for it to settle in, and if I need to go get a touch up or something, I'll have t- I'll have time to go do that. Now I don't have the time to do any of that. No, nope. <laughs> so, like, I was going to ask, did you like reschedule it? Or yeah, for tomorrow. You... Okay, for tomorrow. 
which, you know, it's, it, that's fine. But again, it's, it's less than two weeks and it takes yeah. two weeks for Botox to settle. So it's like, at that point, it's like, okay, well now I can't, I can't get it touched up if I need to have it touched up. No. You know? And you don't so, want to do it too close to show. I did that yeah. twice last year. I was an idiot. I did it before Chicago and I actually did it before the Olympia. I did it to myself yeah. again and my top lip would not move in any of my photos at the Olympia. So it's like, I have this like weird smile that is totally not me. And I kept looking at my photos and I was like, why, does, why did I look like that? And I was like, your Botox, you got it way too close to show and it didn't have yep. time to like fill it, you know, whatever. So, so yep. it mm -hmm. timeline matters on these things. That's why I totally totally understand where you're coming from so like tomorrow i'm going in tomorrow and they're like you know what time do you i was like well i want it in the afternoon so i can get all my stuff done in the morning i was like but i can't because of the traffic i'm not going to do that again so like yeah so my so you're gonna get up tomorrow. really early <laughs> my appointment is 12 30 tomorrow so i'm not gonna lift tomorrow thankfully thankfully i didn't take a rest day yet this week. So I plan my, my, my training rest day for tomorrow. So I, all I have to do is my cardio. Perfect. I'll do my cardio in the morning. I'll go get my Botox done. Come home and be ready for the trick or treaters. There you go. <laughs> what are you dressing like, as tomorrow? What's your costume for tomorrow? Um, I think I'm going to do Ariel tomorrow. I was seeing okay. that was the other thing too. Like yesterday I was going to play with it a little bit and do the, do the makeup and all that kind of stuff. But I was just so inflamed and so tired. I was like, no, I've got to, I've got to get rid of this. Like I, I got to get an Epsom salt bath. I got to, I got to do the recovery thing. So I did that instead. <laughs> so with how your house is set up, yeah. do you get a lot of trick or treaters? So this is going to be the first year because last year we were here, obviously, but it poured, it downpoured oh, on Halloween. Okay. So, we so got you're not sure? Done. I don't know. Oh, okay. I yeah. Know. I mean, we don't get any either, but we're in a small, really small cul-de-sac and like we yeah. have two kids, but they go to a, a different neighborhood. So we never get kids. My concern, like, I think there's going to be plenty of trick-or-treaters, but our house is so far back off the road that yeah, I don't that's know what I was going to want to come all the way down the driveway. So, yeah. but you make your house look really cool. We and, do. Like, so, inviting, so what I think I'm going to do, because if you look at the, our front yard, we've got the, the two poles or whatever. We've got our um, our little skeletons on them and stuff. I'm going to put a, a white erase board on there and be like, come all the way up the driveway. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I promise we'll make it worth it. We'll give you like a big bag of candy or something. Like, you know what I mean? So, cause that, so that was the other thing that was, that was so sad for me last year because Piggle, our dog, she passed away in, in February. Piggle loved Halloween. That was like mm. her favorite holiday. She loved kids. I was so, going to say, what did she love about it? She loves kids. Absolutely loves kids. So we would dress her up and we put her in her little leash and put her on the on the door and she would be there to greet all the trick-or-treaters when they came. It was like her favorite day. Like she freaking loved it. So it was very upsetting last year that it was pouring down rain and we got no trick-or-treaters. I was so sad. And that was her last Halloween. I was like, couldn't, yeah. Yeah. Poor baby. Yeah. There's no trick-or-treaters for her. So, yeah. I'm hoping we get some this year. I'm hoping we get some. Um, I think it's a good idea to put the sign out. Or yeah, you and Dan are going to have to get your lawn chairs and go hit, <laughs> hit the bit. I know. Uh, well, I was like, we could we could go put the, we've got the big um, animatronic things. And one of them's got the little, the little tray thing. I'm like, we could put those out by the mailbox. Well, what fun is that? You guys got to come to the then front you don't, door. Yeah, then you don't see yeah, them. You don't see it. And then that. are you guys doing like anything after trick-or-treaters? Like going to any other events or anything like that? No, I don't think no. so. I typically don't. I mean, if it, if it was a weekend, sure. But like, because yeah. it's a weekday and like, you know, Wednesday, I got to pack up and get ready to go to go to Orlando for Olympia and all that true. stuff too. Yeah, so true. I've got clients and all that kind of thing. So you guys will make the most of it. Yeah, we'll have fun with it. Like, you know, whenever, whenever it's like a holiday or something and we don't go do something, we just put our fire out in the back and all that kind of stuff. And we just smoke our cigars or we do a grill or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, chill. We're simple people. We're simple. I was gonna say after tomorrow, now you got to clean all that up and get all the Christmas decorations. Out. I know. That's the I next know. thing you're not to work on. Oh, so let me think. I'm trying to think. I I don't know. I'll probably do all that prior to going. Um, I love fall decorations though too. So I have a whole set of Halloween stuff, but then I have just like fall decorations for they kind of coincide. Yeah. 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 So when do you put your tree up? Usually, like the day after Thanksgiving. Usually. Okay. Yeah. Drew so. makes me wait till Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's usually Thanksgiving. Um, when I was a kid, we always got real trees. Now we get the fake ones because the dogs and stuff like that. So. Yeah. We have a fake one um, too, which has yeah. actually lasted. When we first got married, we went and got our first Christmas tree 
And we were considering getting a real one, but okay. but then we didn't because of our animals. Yeah. And we got a flocked one, a flocked fake tree. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's stupid. It's never going to last. All the flock's going to fall out. That tree from Target is perfect six years <laughs> later. And I just want to be like, to oh, everybody, that's <laughs> everybody said that my tree wasn't going to be good, I'm still using that tree and it still looks brand new out of the box every single year. So thank you. <laughs> I got a new one last year because when we moved, the one that we that we had from the townhouse. Probably too small. It, no, it wasn't even that. It just fell apart. Like it, okay. we've had it for a long time. And so I got a new one last year. And then I got a bunch of little ones because, again, we have the windows up front. So I put little ones in all the windows. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So little, I love your I've decorating been... style. <laughs> Well, and it's not even just me too. It's it's my husband as well. So like we have a game room that we have nothing in right now. Like, so this whole week we've had people, people over, we've had them doing the lighting and the walls and all this kind of stuff. So he just ordered a pool table and like bar stools and everything. And it's like this, cool. this really cool marble looking pool table, with like blue velvet and like the blue velvet bar stools and everything. And it's all, it's all him. It's all him. <laughs> Are you got, so wait, when you say that there's nothing in there right now because you're like redoing it. Yeah. Like so are you like it's... making it into like a little like movie game room type thing? Yeah. Okay. It's cool. like our it's the front room up near up near our front door. We've got one off to the side that's got a desk and everything in it. That one's all set. And then there's one on the other side that's got nothing in it. Literally got nothing. It. That so, would be cool. And then behind that is our dining room. So the dining room's here and then the game room will be here. And then the front door is like right here. So that's awesome. when you walk in, you'll see the game room on one side and the desk room on the other side. So. Oh, that's so cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. The things, the things we do when we get older, right? We're like, this right. is the things that we get excited about. <laughs> For us, we work on our bodies and our houses. That's, yes. what, that's what we do while you're alone. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so when he told me he's getting a pool table, I was like, so now you're telling me I have to get good at pool. <laughs> Now I envision you guys at night smoking your cigars on the back know, porch, right? going inside, shooting some pool, and going to bed. I know, I know. I'm like, we're, we're officially old people now. I was gonna like, say you're the my... you're the cool couple. You guys are the cool couple. Like, who doesn't want to go to your right? house now? All right? of our listeners are probably like, I'm going to stay at Sean's house when I'm That's in true. Virginia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I, I already have. We just haven't put it up yet. I have a dartboard already for the room. I've got a little like mini golf what? thing to, for the room in there too. So yeah, so once oh, we get it all set up, it'll be it'll it'll be fun. It'll be cool. So we gotta we gotta make a trip to your house. Eventually. I know. Yeah, with the dogs out there and everything too. And I saw our, I think I mentioned this on the last, I can't remember if I said this on the last podcast or not, where I go outside in the back and there's always something that goes, that walks through our, our yard in the back. I thought it was foxes. It's not because I saw what it was last night. It's a skunk. <laughs> oh it's no. A skunk. Because I'm sitting there big? on the back porch. Yes, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, they, get, they get big. Yeah. And I'm sitting there on the back porch. And I'm like, I'm just listening. I'm hearing him walking across. And t- last night he came really close to the deck. And I was like, because I can hear the crunching leaves. And I was like, I wonder if I can see what this thing is. So I get up and I pull my flashlight up on my phone and I flash it down there. He almost came up the freaking steps onto my deck. He, I was like, okay. Hi. Hey, bud. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, I don't want you coming up here. You're going to make me all stinky. Go away. <laughs> I know. I was, I was envisioning like, you saying that you turned your flashlight on and then it's like tail comes up and you're like, whoa. Yeah, I know. Whoa. Well, that's what I was worried about. I was like, if this is, because it sounded big. Like it sounded some, like something big down there and it kept getting closer. I was like, what the fuck? What if this is like a bear or something? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm gonna figure out what this is because I like literally I'm sitting there. I'm like, what if this thing comes running up my steps? Whatever it is down there, you know what I mean? So well, I, clearly, it was I, about to. I know. I was like, I, I shine him. He just kind of st- it's just sat there for a second and then mosey right along. Like I wasn't even there. I was like, all right, cool, peace. Keep going. <laughs> You're cute to look at from afar. <laughs> I know, for real. I would oh, much man. rather have been, uh, been like a, a fox or something because they can't make me stink. So. See, you see all this like cool wildlife. I see like bunnies and blue bird, blue jays. That's about the only like cool animals I see. In my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're cool. They work. They they're work. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so anyway, so yeah, so you're less than a week out. I am two and a half weeks out. Um, feeling good. So now, like I said, like as of today, I feel actually pretty good. I'm okay with being up, up five pounds. I'm good with that. Um, yeah. Everybody's because you're in. seeing the difference in yes. how you look, you know, right. when you get the, what, yes. what we were talking about is, you know, 
you're you are in your head a little bit because your weight is so high compared to your season last year. Mm -hmm. And this is what I explained to my girls too, is after you go through an improvement season, obviously the whole point is to put on lean muscle tissue, right? Mm -hmm. So theoretically you should be a little bit heavier, um, you know, in season, or I should say uh, prep to prep when you get stage lean, or you should be maybe a little bit tighter and then the weight's kind of the same, but Mm -hmm. theoretically your weight should be a little bit heavier if you've added some good lean muscle tissue. And there is no doubt that you are holding your shape. I mean, if anybody has seen Sean's, you know, update, she's been posting pretty much daily at this point when she's doing her posing practice. One of what I told Sean is one of the first things I usually see her see go on her is her glutes and her glute shape. And she's definitely holding that upper outer and her glute hamstring Mm -hmm. tie in. And she's definitely got like that density factor and she's just still continues to get leaner. So it's a really exciting time. And that's where you're not being the bikini bitch. You really got to like remove yourself from data at that point and focus on the photos, especially when your body has made such a massive change from last season to this season. You almost have to find your new normal and then kind of build data off of that. Absolutely. It's, and, that, and that's the hardest thing. It's like, cause you know, my, my feedback has always been to get denser, get fuller, you know, all the conditioning, conditioning, and that's getting denser. And so it's really hard because it's a new set of criteria to compare myself to like that. I don't have anything from before to, to compare it with. I just don't, I don't look the same at all, you know? So it's like, how do I, even, how do I, I know, right. I'm like, how do I even compare this? Like, I can't compare it. There's no way to do that. So, you know, again, I get up in my head about the stage weight thing. Like I've been as low as 132 pounds on stage. I've been that low before. And right now I'm in the, in the mid one, one forties, you know what I mean? So that's a lot, that's a lot of size, you know? And I'm just like, okay, like I, I, I'm good with that. I'm fine with that. As long as it's quality size, you know, as long as it's what I want it to be. Uh, and that's the, that's the difference. Like, and sometimes you get so deep into it that you can't trust your own eyes, which is why I think a lot of times we need coaches, um, because they can see it. We can't. Uh, and I, I feel like I can see it, but at the same time, there's been times in the past where I felt like I could see it and I didn't, you know what I mean? I was just making things up in my head. So it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult. And then, you know, also looking at updates for everybody going into the Olympia, almost everybody is going into the Olympia heavier than what they did last year. So I'm like, well, if they're going in heavier, right. If they're going in heavier, then I better be going in heavier. You know what I mean? Like I better be, otherwise I'm not going to be big enough, period. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I went into the morning. Olympia at 116 last year. Obviously, this was before I woke up with COVID at 114 the morning of, oh, but yeah. 116 I was averaging all week. This year we're going in at around 120, 119, yeah. 120. So and same thing with Maureen. She was she posted on her story, she's like two almost two kilograms bigger, which is about four pounds, three, four pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a she's a small girl. That's, that's a, a lot. lot for her. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know? And I think it's interesting too. I mean, Sean, you've been doing this over a decade. You know, and I want the listeners to know that you've been doing this over a decade and you can still get in your head and feel like this, you know, timing doesn't really affect the, um, the thoughts that we can create as an athlete, you know, that goes from season to season and how you're feeling internally. But like, you know, you've been doing this over a decade and you're still questioning, like, is this right? Is this not blah, blah, blah. But with, you know, the last couple of seasons that you've had in your feedback, it's just been to, you know, keep changing and keep coming in fuller and making, you know, so obviously you don't want to keep showing up the same or the same weight. That's literally the definition of insanity, right? So when you kind of remove yourself from those feelings or those emotions, and you kind of look at yourself in more of that healthy brain and you're like, oh, my weight is up, but that's exactly what they asked for. Exactly. So that's just like, you know, to your point, I get this question all the time. Why as a coach, do you have a coach? Because I'm the same way. I told yep. you guys last week, Wednesday of hurricane, I called Jamie and said, let's pull out. She was like, mm, no, we're going to be okay. But if it was me, I would have pulled myself yeah. out. If I was coaching myself, I would have pulled myself out of the show. Yep. Wild. Yeah. Crazy. Cause like, you know, and that's like you just said with Jamie, like she talks, like, it's like, I'm ready. Like you're good. Like, okay, we're going to get you lean now so we can fill you back out. And I'm just like, but, but are we, I'm not, I'm not ready though. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I, I don't know. I'm not because I, you know, I see different things because again, we're clouded. We can't see ourselves clearly. No. Um, I was just funny. I was listening to Bro Chat the other day, and they had they had Samson Dioda on there, and talking about how even he does not weigh himself. Um, in season? No. Now in prep. Wow. Yeah. He doesn't weigh himself. 
Um, he doesn't weigh himself uh, because it gets into his head. Very. I'm. I'm really impressed that he said that on yeah. an open on an open platform like yeah. that. I. I. That's really cool. Yep. Because they're so, they're look they're focusing on the look. That's right. And I and I love when Jamie says that too. And I've I've started saying this to my girls because it really does matter. It doesn't matter what the scale sets at the end of the day. We're going for a look. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Unless you're in a, in a in a division where they actually weigh you, who cares? Correct. Right. Like a weight cap. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But they especially were talking in about, the bikini um, division, it doesn't matter what you weigh. The, the girl next to you could be five pounds less than you or five pounds more than you. You guys both look comparable. Right. <laughs> they were talking about um uh, Hunter, Hunter Lorada too. So what they do, what he does, because I guess he was starting to get into his head about his weight too. So what he does is he does weigh himself for his coach, but his wife, Liz, looks at the weight. Hunter doesn't. So Liz looks at it, reports it to his coach, and Hunter never sees it. And then it. he never he sees it. Doesn't yeah. get into his head. Yep. Yeah. I've suggested that with athletes too. It's cool with the scales, the ones that have the app, because then the, the athlete can just look up and then the spouse yeah. has the, the um, app in their hand and then yeah. they can screenshot it and send it to the coach or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, you got to protect yourself, you know, and, and you don't, you as the athlete don't need to know the weight us as coaches use it as specifically a data point. But again, yep. like as a, you know, taking my athlete half net out off, Hat, athlete hat off right now and putting a coaching hat on when I have girls on peak week, I'm really not focusing too much on the weight. I'm just focusing mm -hmm. on those photos and those videos yeah, that are look. coming in each day. Exactly. Yeah. And making sure that I'm seeing the look that I want to bring versus what the scale is telling me at that point, the scale really what drew and I rely on most during peak week is actually their PM weight. Cause then we're going to kind of be able to know if we're taking that data for a couple of weeks, if, if, if they're going to drop, in the morning, like, do I need to feed them a little bit more or if they're going to stay full and things like that. But other than that, we're looking just for those photos and for that yeah. look. Yeah. Well, and I was telling you, like I had one of my girls that competed in wellness this past weekend at clash. Um, yeah. Congratulations. She yeah. She looked phenomenal. It was her first time back on stage, in like, you know, five and a half years. So the last time wow. she was on stage was, was bikini. She got her, her pro card in bikini. Um, awesome. She was always a little bit quad dominant. But, you know, I asked her the morning of the show, I was like, do you mind me asking you what your what your weight is right now? Because I'm just curious about these kinds of things. I always like to see, you know, where people are and things like that. And she's five foot eight. She's a tall girl. So wow. um, she's um, she was on stage. She said she thought she was about 145, 146. Okay. Um, and when she was a bikini, it was 130. So she put on like 15 pounds, 15 pounds of muscle. Right. Wow. And they told her her feedback was she needed to get bigger. <laughs> So from this past so, yeah, weekend, yeah, from this past weekend. Yep. Yep. So, um, so I, you know, I, I always relate that back to, okay, how does that relate back to me? Again, I go back to, you know, I'm 145 now and I'm like, I'm bikini, I'm not wellness and I get that, but I'm also an inch taller and the taller that you get, the more weight you should have more on weight you, have, all those yeah. kinds of things. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm like, this makes, makes more sense to me now too. And then I go back to like Laura Lee talked about how at the Olympia, she was seven pounds lighter there than she was at the Arnold when she was Arnold. At the Arnold. She was seven pounds heavier at the Arnold. And again, Laura Lee's five foot eight. So you have to remember all these little things like they, they matter, like they make a difference as far as your ratios and stuff like that too. Going back to the don't be a bikini bitch thing, bikini when it first started, it was like a pageant girl look, right? And so it was about how much you weighed. It was about your frame being teeny tiny and all the correct kind of stuff. and attainable, you know, like a, yes. a, a I want to say like a magazine, but someone who could, that you could be like, I can do that. Well, it was it was Hooters girl. I mean, that's what they were looking for. That's there what it go. was based off of. It was based yeah. off of the Hooters girl searches and stuff like okay. that. So, okay. um, you know, going back to when I was you know in college, I used to do like I wasn't cheer. I wasn't on the cheer squad, but that's the best way to to explain it for one of the hockey teams back where I lived. And they did, they did weigh-ins, like when you came to go work out at the gym and stuff like that. And, uh, and I was always bigger, always. I was always bigger. I was like 140 always. And that was big for, for those girls. Those girls were like 120, 115, you know what I mean? And I'm I like, all right. I feeling I'm, like that know? in high school when we used to do like the yeah. yearly uh, testing and you would have to stand on the scale in front of everybody and do like the hamstring test. And I always was yes. larger than the girls yes. in my class, but I was always very dense muscle without even yeah. trying. Um, yeah. But but it goes to that same thing. And now look at us with our good know, right? for bodybuilding. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's just structure and overall shape of your frame and stuff like that too. I just, I'm a 
a bigger framed girl. Like I just am. I'm not this petite little thing. I'm just yeah. not. I've never been there. Not going to be there. I mean, when I, before I ever competed, people are like, why don't you compete? Because I was just bigger, just built yeah. bigger, you know? So you have to take those things into account. And now it's so funny because now we're in, in bodybuilding and I'm like, I need to get bigger. I need to get bigger. I need to get bigger. <laughs> Because I'm too yeah. small. Because I'm too small. I'm like, where did where? Since when am I too small? <laughs> you are too good at shrinking yourself and yeah. meeting the cri- the criteria. But the criteria yeah. was changing and evolutionizing too. Yeah. When you're trying to bring yourself smaller, so you you you, you didn't do too bad. You kind of just didn't force yourself into a box. You could either grow a little bit more. You could continue yeah. to go downsize. Now we just got to continue to grow the grow the muscle where you want it. Right. <laughs> Exactly. And that's the other part of it too, is that find, finding the places to grow, you know? And, and so again, going back to one of the things we wanted to talk about some of the stereotypes of bikini that don't exist. Right. So a lot of people think that bikini girls don't lift that bikini girls, just all they do is cardio and all of that kind of stuff. And that is so not the case. Um, I will say that I don't, I would say I'm, I don't lift heavy in comparison to a lot of people. I'm not a heavy lifter, but I'm an intensity lifter. Um, so I do more volume. I do more, um, my muscle connection, all that kind of stuff. I don't do, and again, this goes back to structure. I don't do a lot of squatting and things like that because my legs are so long. So it ends up going into my back instead of going into my legs or whatever I do. I'm, I'm more so break it up for body part and things like that, but I 100% train way harder than I ever do cardio right? That's why I hate cardio because I hate having to push myself on cardio. I hate it. Yeah. I absolutely fucking hate it. So, um, like we know that's, <laughs> I know I said that a few times. I'm just joking. <laughs> but I love what you say because everybody's like, yeah, me too, girl. Me too. I know. Right. I know. But that's the thing is like bikini girls are not just cardio bunnies. We're not on the treadmill and the elliptical all day long. And if you are, there's something wrong with your programming. There's something right. wrong with your programming. You should not be on that all the time. Especially um, in an off season setting. Yes. I just stuck on two athletes within the past two weeks and both of them are deep into off season, still doing cardio every day for more than 30 minutes. One of them was doing seven days a week of 45 minutes and the other was doing an hour a day. Why? Why are you we doing that? Yeah, you got and, then, and then I asked them about their intensity and their weight training and they're like, well, I just feel like I don't really have the push to do that after cardio. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> It doesn't make sense to me. It's like, how do you expect to grow any kind of size, any kind of muscle at all, if you're not putting the intensity in there? Like I, yeah. like I've said this several times before, I would much rather put the intensity into my training than into my cardio, right? Yes. And cardio it is scientifically is proven that you can burn more calories through resistance training than cardio any day. Yep. Um, I think for a lot of people, especially bikini athletes, when I take them on, it's just, they don't know how to train. You know, not everybody is blessed to be able to yes. work with trainers in person. Um, there are not a lot of coaches that review training footage or training in general. Um, I think that is something that's very highly missed at the top oh, level of coaching. Um, that is something that I, I really spend a lot of time with my clients on is their training because I've been blessed with mm-hmm. really great trainers and coaches that have taught me and I wouldn't have known these things. And, and I come from a background of having a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology, but there is something different about learning from someone and them showing you yes. your perceived limit. Yes. And pushing past it. Yes. And that is really truly where intensity comes from. Intensity means different things to different people. You don't have to lift heavy to lift mm-hmm. intently. Um, and, I, and something we talked about last week too is just your attention to the session. Are yes. you on your phone? Are you watching something? Blah, blah, blah. Are you literally working on mind and muscle connection? Are you thinking about every single set, every single rep? Because when you're tuned into the session and your mind is there, that creates a completely different experience and intensity as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and the other part of it too is just understanding like you were you, you were saying like not everybody's blessed to have a trainer. Whenever you join a gym, they give you like a free session with the trainers. It's a way for a trainer to sell their services, right? Take advantage of that. Because you may learn something little, right? I've worked in gyms my whole life. And I, I when I was worked, I worked at front desk at Bally's in, I think it was in St. Pete, actually. Ooh. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was down there, um, you know, when you, when you work there, they tell, they, they want you to go through a session with the trainers that they have there too. So you can see how they, they do everything. Cause as the front desk person, like you're you have to talk about it, measurements or, yeah. or for memberships and all that. So, um, so I will never forget. I went through a training session with one of the trainers there 
And for the first time ever, he told me how to actually crunch my abs. Like I'd never done abs and been like, oh, I can feel it in my abs. All of a sudden yeah. I was like, oh my God, that's what it's supposed to feel like. Like I, I, I was like, I had no idea that that's actually what it felt like to do a crunch, <laughs> you know, just like, but you don't know, till like you that. don't know, you don't that's know, right. till you know, <laughs> that's right. And I see this all the time. I don't coach, but I do posing coaching. So I see it all the time where girls have really bad mind muscle connection when it comes to posing because they're not training correctly. Or I'm like, you know, you need to be able to release your traps. I said, the reason why your traps are so tight and why they're so big is because I bet you're trying to lift your shoulders heavy, aren't you? Yeah. They're using their traps to lift versus their shoulders. Yeah. I was like, drop the weights when you're training your shoulders. If you're going too heavy, you're going into your traps. Your traps are going to build your shoulders or not. Yeah. You know, simple things like that. You don't know how to do a lat spread and can't connect to a lat spread and be able to do that. You're not training your back properly. Yep. Absolutely. I just took on a client that's been, she's a nationally qualified athlete. She's been on the stage a bunch of times. She came from another coach. And every time I saw her, she just had these huge traps and like the shape was odd. So she ends up coming to coach with me and we work on training. I said, I've been watching you for the last six months. I know exactly what we need to start, start on. And it is your training. Send me training videos. Every single movement, lower body day, upper body day, shoulder day, back day, all trap activated. Everything's here. So yeah. no wonder why she has no shoulders and everything's here. Three weeks into the session, she messages me. She's like, I have never, ever felt my shoulders or I've ever felt sore in my shoulders until this week till now and i was like yeah and i was like yes because you're actually utilizing them now keeping the traps down but again she doesn't know until someone points that out to right. her and explains that to her and just like you're saying it is very easy to just go join a gym get a couple free sessions i know it's weird and some of those big box gyms about like commitments and things like that i know at our gym we have a trainer that is specified for bodybuilding coach amy so anytime that somebody from fit body fusion wants training or wants an in-person session a lot of people just fly because they know we have that here yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but not everybody has that option you know but s somebody is better than nothing if Correct. your training is needing that kind of attention so yep. just some bare bones training is going to be so beneficial Absolutely. You know that you can't get that from, you know, like a YouTube video or something like that. You know what I mean? That's the other thing. Like, because again, I go back to what I do is with the posing. So many people try to learn how to pose through watching videos. It's like, that's not the same thing. Like, A, no. you don't look like that. That's the first thing. That's not your physique, physique and that's not your body. B, you don't know how they're actually tw twisting their hips and opening their arms and their lats. And they don't, you don't know how they're doing that. You're just looking at them. They're doing it. You, you don't know how to do it. There's a difference. Correct. Yeah. So it all comes back to you need to get with somebody that can show you how to do it, how to train, how to lift, how to pose, because again, everybody's going to be different. I have a girl now that I'm working with posing and um, a couple weeks ago, uh, put her into a, a different front pose. It looks great on her. It looks fantastic. And then a week later, she's a little bit leaner. And all of a sudden, she's got this like bump on the top of her glutes. And it honestly looks like she got glute filler or something stuck in there. And it's, it's not, wow. but I was like, we got to put you back in your old pose. I said, because this looks bad. Like it looks and like her, her coach agreed and all that stuff too. I was like, I actually like this pose better on you, but because of that little hump you got going on right there, we can't do that on stage. Show the flaw. Yeah. And it's, and I was like, that's coming from how you're activating your glutes. When we first started posing, she was, flexing her glutes and her back pose and her glutes never looked great she's like i've got the skin problem blah 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 blah. i was like it's because you're flexing i was like you need to relax yeah you know she was she didn't even realize she was doing it she didn't even know she was doing it a lot of girls was, flex their glutes yes. and, and they think that they should flex yes you, you don't flex yeah and as soon as she let it go all of a sudden her glutes round out they look great you know her skin wasn't all wrinkled up anymore all that kind of stuff and I was like, because of the way that you've been training and because of the way that you've been posing for so long, you've got this like this muscle that just grew out of nowhere. <laughs> I was like, you know, and anytime we twist your toe, it pops. I was like, so we can't put you in that pose until we figure out how to get rid of that. You know what I mean? And again, it just goes back to she just didn't even know she was doing it. Right. She didn't know she was doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think too, it's the same, you know, you coming from posing and me coming from, you know, doing in-person training for so many years, 
you have to have three different ways to explain the same thing because yes. one person will pick up one way and then they don't really get that way. So you try number two. They don't really get mm -hmm. that one either. Then the third, oh, light bulb moment. Then you go to the next person and you're trying to instruct the same thing. Let's say a lot spread. Number one works better for this person, but two and three, they don't really get. So you always yep. have to have like three ways to explain an exercise or an activation technique. And that is the hardest part as a trainer. And I will say that I think the coaches that really do have like the best outcomes and are really, really good with kind of managing so many things when it comes to athletes are the people that have had hands on training yes. with people before, because it takes so much extra time and knowledge to be able to work with someone one on one. You have to think in the middle of that training session too, or in that middle of that posing session, when a client comes to you with a, just a random question, you have to come up with that answer right on the spot that keeps you sharp yes. it's also okay to say as a coach or opposing coach you know i'm not really sure of that answer right now yeah. i need to take a day and i'm going to get back to you i'm going to come back to you about that one on our next session yep. but that allows you to keep sharpening your own tools and your own knowledge and how to deliver that to the client yes um so I, I think that that kind of coaching or experience for us as professionals has been profound in what kind of we get back to our clients well, I say that too. Like I went to, I went to school for education, music education. And so, you know, having that background of being able to teach somebody something yeah. is a big deal, you know, because yes. like you said, people, they learn visually, they learn through auditory or they learn through kinesthetic. So everybody's a little bit different and some people are a combination, you know what yep. I mean? So you have to have ways of explaining it and showing it so that they can do it a little bit. You can figure out what works for them. Cause yeah. like you said, one way is not going to work the same way for everybody else. So you yeah. got to get show, tell, see, hear, all those kinds of things. Look them touch, feel, all of that. So like you said, the more that you do it with people too, the more you're going to know how to tackle it with the next person because you're going to see some things that work for this person or work for that person. And you can put, combine those to work for somebody else. So it, it, it does make a difference. And again, that's going back to why it's important to have somebody actually teach you how to do these things versus just trying to go and watch a YouTube video or something like that. You know what I mean? Cause it does make a difference. You know, I see it all the time in these, these groups on like Facebook and things like that. People are just regurgitating whatever they saw on Google, you know, and it's, just, that's not, that's not the case. You know, again, going back to the bikini bitch thing, everybody's a little different when it comes to their food too. Right. Completely. Different. I know you, yeah, I know you do like more of a meal plan when you're in prep and things like that. I'm still macro based, but I go, you know, basically have meal a meal plan because it's essentially the same thing that I eat almost every meal. But thinking that you have to stick to just asparagus and tilapia all the time in bodybuilding is not the case. You know, no. I started I started doing today. I just started taking pictures of my food. I don't normally do that. <laughs> I just started doing it while I was on my stories on Instagram. So, uh, like, I, I'm just showing each meal, and I'm realizing I have a pretty big variety of food in my in my diet you know it's the same thing i eat every day but depending on the meal i'll have a different protein or something like that so like my breakfast right now i do chicken um my dave's bagel thing that i always do and then i do um i have this little acai bowl it's just it's just fruit and then greek yogurt so that's my that's my my breakfast every day so that's pretty robust you know when you're talking about prep and being two weeks out from a show <laughs> You know Definitely. what I mean? That's a, lot of, that's a lot of options. Yep. Yeah. And then like my next meal, uh, depending, and it, sometimes I, I order these differently, but this is just how I did it today. My next meal was, was chicken. And then I have these rice cakes with, with, um, dark chocolate on them. And they're, you know, again, for me works great. Like it's a little bit of fat, a little bit of sweetness, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I just had cod with green beans and, and rice cakes. And then later on I'll have more chicken and, and grits. Um, and then my last meal of the night will probably be whatever protein I decide. Maybe I have shrimp. I'll probably do shrimp. That's like my last, my last meal and add in, you know, whatever carbs I've left, it'll be rice cakes or grits or something like that. I'm, I've, I've been on this grits kick. I really like grits for some reason. I was going to say grits is, it's random, but that's a good carb <laughs> choice. I, for some reason, like I go on these kicks, like I, 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 for, for some preps, I'll do like all oatmeal. Like right now, I've just been doing all grits. I love grits for whatever reason. So I don't know. It's like a little bit of crunchiness. I don't know. 
I don't know what it is, but <laughs> hey, but it doesn't matter what you're eating as long as you're staying consistent, yeah. you're following your macros, you yeah. know, like some people, they just need to create that meal plan for themselves and follow it. And that's mm-hmm. what works for them. And they want to be very diligent and, you know, know exactly what to eat at each meal and keep it the same, blah, 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 blah. Some people adhere better when they have flexibility, like right. you, where they can switch their proteins every other meal or every other day or switch their bit, whatever, because that's what keeps them on track. At the end of the day, it's what's going to keep that athlete on track. And that's why it is really important to not go bikini bitch and get in your head and try to switch things up because you see Jordan on Instagram eating chicken and rice five meals a day. But then you see Sean on Instagram having Mm -hmm. acai bowls and David's kit. It doesn't matter. That's what works for Sean. And this is what works for me. That doesn't mean that you have to do either one for it to work for you. You just need to find what works for you with your coach, you know, and that's where everybody ticks and everybody's a little bit different mentally and what keeps them on track. It's just what's going to make the most sense for you. And that's where, you know, I think a lot of these things come up with the, you know, getting into our bikini brains, it's all about comparison, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a really great way of not getting, you know, too caught up in what you're doing is to stay off of what everybody else is doing and just focus on what you're doing. And if you know that you're following your plan and you you are not eating things off plan and you're not skipping cardio and things like that, and we've talked about this and you see that scale go up or not moving, you know, it's coming. Yes. You know it's mm-hmm. coming. You just got to stay consistent. But then yep. if you get on social media and then you see the girl that's going to compete with you in two weeks and she's dropping weight, blah, 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 yep. blah, blah, compare, compare, compare. Then you start going into these rabble holes with your coach on maybe we should be changing something and da, da, da. At the end of the day, you just got to focus on what you're doing and what works for you. Yes. Absolutely. Keep it simple. <laughs> yep. And, and that's the thing. It's like, like you just said, the whole adherence thing. Like I, I work better this way versus some people like to have like the refeed meals or cheat meals or whatever. I, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm more of a fan of, I want to stay consistent every day yes. and allowing myself to have, you know, the, the bagel every morning keeps me consistent. You know, yes. allowing myself to have that dark chocolate keeps me consistent. Most of the time I get the majority of my fat from dark chocolate. That's most of the time. Sometimes I want something a little bit different. So I'll do salmon or I'll do beef Mm -hmm. or steak or something like that. And that's where I'll get my fat. I never, like, I never add fats. Like I never add like coconut coconut oil oil or something like that. Avocado, nut butters, things like that. I don't do that. And it's just like, for some people, that's how they get their fats. That's how they like it. Or they like to do the peanut butter or whatever. I just don't like doing that. Like, that's just not, not my thing you know? Yeah. So you got to find what works for you. I also don't, don't do nut butters because I can't stick to one serving. <laughs> I just like, had a client text me. She started her first this past weekend and she was like, I need the nut butter out of the house. I'm throwing yeah. it all away. Cause if not, I'm going to yeah. binge on it. And yep. you know what? Good for you. Good yep. for you for making that adjustment and that understanding. And she then took it a step further and she told her boyfriend, mm-hmm. I have a problem with nut butter. I'm throwing it away. Please don't bring it home and please don't buy it. And yep. if you see me eating it the next eight weeks, I'm not allowed to have it. Yep. I was like, I'm really proud of you. And that's you one know? of the reasons why I like the dark chocolate because it's enough, but it's not something where I'm going to sit there and eat a ton of it. Yeah, you can't. It's too, no. I want to say rich, but that's not the word. It's just, no, you it's, can't. It's enough, yeah. but it's not like overly sweet and it's not like. It's very satiating. Know, yes. Yeah. Same thing when you're talking about, that's why I say like the salmon and things like that. It's satiating and it's very satisfying eating it. Yeah. Satisfying and things like that. You don't feel like, like, I'm never going to sit there and say, I want three fillets of salmon. (laughs) Like, no, I'm never going to do that, you know? But you will eat it and feel satisfied because of fat content in it. Yep. That's right. But God, I haven't had salmon in forever. That sounds good. Yeah. It's a, it's actually really good. So I get it from mega fit meals. So Okay. Um, I am actually joining like Mega it? Fit Meals. Oh, okay. Okay. I haven't made the announcement yet, but I okay. am joining Mega Fit Meals. I'm actually currently with them, but um, I had a local company take over my prep the last couple of weeks. So I'm really excited because I've had nice. some of their meals when I've been out on the road um, and their food is really, really good. Their quality is nice. really good. I love that you could do like the bulk proteins that make yes. your meals. So I'm excited about that. Okay. So cool. Yeah. So salmon is good the, for Mega Fit. Salmon is good. Um, Noted. So what I, my, my last order that I did with them, I have a lot of chicken. Um, and I do like two containers of beef, one of salmon because the salmon's pretty high in fat content. So I can't have it all the time. I'll have it like once every three days or something like that. Um, I do the, I do the cod. I do like the cod. I, I haven't done their tilapia. I just have an aversion to tilapia. So I just didn't do it. Um, not saying that there's is bad because I've not had it. So I don't know. <laughs> um, and then their shrimp is pretty good too. So okay. 
what I tend to do for, for myself is like I'll pull like three different types of proteins and put them in the refrigerator and the rest of them I'll stay in my freezer. So I'll have like, I'll have beef out, I'll have chicken out and I'll have shrimp out. And then I'll go through those three and I'll pull more out that kind of thing. Yeah. I always have chicken because I'm going to go through chicken all the time. Um, I'll have one of the, the, either the, the shrimp or the cod out because it's no fat. So you can always stick that in there. Um, and then I'll have either beef or salmon out at one time or another because they're higher in fat content. So mm, um, that's kind of how hungry. I measure everything. I know, right? <laughs> but that's kind of how I measure, like manage everything with the food because then I've got three different protein choices that I can choose from every day. Plus I do Greek yogurt. So I do Greek yogurt every day too. So I do usually Greek yogurt in the morning. Sometimes it's my last meal. Um, it just depends on what my macros are looking like too. So if I, and that's the other thing too, for me, Greek yogurt is like a satiating or a, a treat thing for me too. So I'll do like, if I, if I'm craving something or whatever, I'll do Greek yogurt at night with some stevia on it. And I'm, I'm good. You know, I love Greek yogurt, yogurt, some berries. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yum. That's what I do with my, in the morning. I do Greek yogurt with the acai bowl. So that's my that's yum. part of my breakfast. Yeah. One of so, my favorite snacks in my off season. I love that. See, that's, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. And yeah. here's the other thing too. So I, I stopped doing fruit because I was doing bananas. If you remember, we talked about this. I was doing bananas yeah. for a long time. I stopped doing fruit just because I wanted to have more satiating carbs because, you know, you're getting more sugar in, in fruit, things like that. So my last check-in, I told Jamie that I pulled the fruit and I just, it, it was just because I wanted to have more food, more volume, more satiating food, carbs. She's like, don't pull fruit, put fruit back in. So I put the essay rolls back in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. like I had berries for one meal a day and um, like when, when we're, when we're depleting and I keep it, uh, I mean, like my berries are like so good for my fiber. And then as soon yeah. as I have to remove them, my digestion goes downhill. Yeah. So we try to keep those in as long as we can. Um, yep. I, I still don't understand why people remove fruit. So I understand where, where you are coming from, mm -hmm. but a lot of people are like, Oh, I can actually have fruit with macro tracking. Yes. Yes, yeah. you can. <laughs> it helps you go to the bathroom, guys. Yeah, helps you go to the bathroom. it's good. And it's yep. sweet. I don't know. I love, mm -hmm. I love like a last meal being really, uh, I like my first and my last meal of the day to have the majority of my fats because okay. I feel like it keeps my metabolism a little bit more satisfied and gives something to my metabolism to kind of okay. keep, keep working on, especially as I'm going to bed. I like to go to bed feeling full. Okay. Um, that's, that's how I like to fall asleep. I don't like to fall asleep feeling hungry. So if I have so a little funny, bit of nut I'm, butter. I'm the opposite. A lot of people are. A lot of people <laughs> the are. Opposite, I yeah. can't fall asleep if I'm hungry. And oh, gosh. So that's how I have to kind of position my meal. So anytime my girls are checking in and they're like, oh, I am starving at night and I can't go to bed. We just switch the fat content to a little bit more in those last two meals of the night and they always feel more satisfied. Huh, but again, that's where you have to rely on your coach yeah. and talk to your coach about these things. There, If you're having a problem or a situation, there's probably something we can do to try to fix it. But yeah. we don't know if there's an issue or that you're feeling something unless you tell us. But, but, but you might not even think it's something that you should mention. But something yeah. like that is fixable. Yep. And that's why I said, I was like, uh, I was like, okay, well, I'll put the fruit back in. Cause I think that will help me with digestion and all that kind of stuff too. And it has, it's, it's helped. Um, you know, not, when it comes to last meals for me, my last meals are always my smallest. Like, uh, I try to eat all of my carbs and all of my fats, everything in the, the day. My breakfast is my biggest meal because I feel like it, it pushes my energy all day long. Um, and then by the time I get to the, to the nighttime, I have probably anywhere between 20 to 30 carbs left. And then, you know, another, another protein, um, servings, whatever it is. So typically my last meal is like a chicken and rice cakes or something like that, or, you know, Greek yogurt and rice cakes <laughs> or grits. Like, again, I go, I go with that, with like the same couple of carbs. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know why, but that's just the way I am. Um, and I don't do rice very often because I feel like rice is very dense in volume, like dense in carbs for the amount of volume. I like the rice cakes because it's more volume, yeah. <laughs> less carbs. So I like more volume to make me feel like I'm full. Of course. Um, you know, so that's, that's why I do the rice cakes versus doing just rice or something yep. like that, you know, and again, just knowing, knowing how you're going to feel better. Um, you know, get going to greens. Like I, I do green beans because I digest green beans really well. If I try to do, um, broccoli, I'll be puffy all day long. Can't do it. You know, I just, I'm just not a fan of spinach. I just don't like it. Uh, so I don't do spinach. Um, asparagus actually makes me a little bit puffy. So if you ever do the FODMAP thing, asparagus is a trigger 
food. So interesting. Um, yeah, I found that out through prep, just figuring out that that's what was making me like not be able to go to the bathroom and things like that was asparagus. Okay. So for some people, it makes them go to the bathroom. For me, it's the opposite. So opposite. yeah, yeah. I, I again, I go with what I digest well, which is green beans. I, I digest green beans really well, so that's why water based. With. Yep. Green bean, zucchini, mm -hmm. that's usually really yep. good on digestion for a majority of people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go again, going back to, this is just bodybuilding in general. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it can if you want it to be. It doesn't have to be chicken and rice, no. coffee and asparagus. Nope. Yeah. No. No. Macro tracking is a beautiful tool. Yeah. A beautiful tool. Yep. And even like water flavorings, like I'm sitting here with my water flavoring right here. I'll start pulling this out last week just because if i have too much of it i do feel a little bit bloated yeah um but until then it's not a problem same thing with my my energy drinks like jamie let me keep my energy drinks in all the way last year all the way through until the final day yeah um if it's not affecting your digestion or if it's not making you feel bloated or it's not making you giving you adverse reactions or whatever there's no there's no reason to take it out yeah you don't have to you don't have yep. to Right. Same thing with coffee. I know some coaches cut, cut coffee. I'm like, are you kidding? I would be a raging bitch on show day if you took my coffee from me. I actually like, just I'm sorry. I actually just heard that this past weekend from another athlete yeah. that her coach didn't let her have black coffee, and I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. It's like I'm not going to the bathroom. I do not feel good. I have no energy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'd rather just give you a grande black coffee right now. Yes. <laughs> like you know, absolutely. Um, yeah, I know. I think some people just try to make it too complicated sometimes, especially at the amateur yep. level. You know, it's like just follow a plan and stick to it. And, you know, you don't have to do the the, the old water loading. And no, I don't know. We, we've talked yeah, about this. That's a yeah, tangent. that's the other thing, too. I mean, but that's and but that's all like old school. Like this is what you're supposed to do kind of stuff. But that's not the case. Like if your physique looks good, don't mess with it. Right. You know, the more that you and mess I think that with turns it, people off too. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The, the less variables that you can have, the better, right? Yeah. Which is goes back to what we were talking about at the very beginning about this uh, this drug to, to delay your period and all that kind of stuff. That's a variable, right? So as I was sitting there and I was re researching all this stuff, I'm like, well, this sounds great, but I don't know how my body's going to actually react to this. So unless I feel like I need it, I'm not going to. You know what I mean? There's no, there's really no sense test it. it. No. You know, so it's like, and even if, even if you do, it's it's Hail not Mary. Say, yeah, it's not to say that your body's going to respond the same when you do it the next time. You know what I mean? So that, I even sure. said that to myself. I was like, even if I tried it right now, like who knows if I would still react the same way. Where are you going to be out in your cycle as now yeah. compared to then and where yeah. are your hormones at now? It, yeah, it's, it is, it's a Hail Mary. It's not yep. something that you can control. It's not something you can test. Mm -mm. it's, it's literally going to be a game time decision. Like if you're mm -hmm. that far off and you feel like you have to take it and that's the only option, then take it. But if not, yeah. try not to take anything and try to, you know, stick to your normals. That's right. Don't and make again, it complicated. Like, <laughs> when you're doing all these, yeah. When you're doing all these, these random shows and stuff too, like there's just so many variables, like traveling to Hawaii, traveling to Tokyo. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of variables, you know, and it just, it's, you can't control all that stuff. Like I had somebody write in a question. They're asking, you know, must haves when you go travel, when you compete abroad. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to find <laughs> yeah. out. Like, no idea. <laughs> I'm like, because I've not done it. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Must Maybe have. that will be a good podcast when you I know, back right? I must, right? Must have. I must have my passport. That's all I know. <laughs> and the, uh, the changer for the outlets. Oh, do I need? Oh, do I need one of those for Tokyo? I thought Some that was the, just Europe. I thought that was. I don't know. I that maybe. Was, Eureka! <laughs> I know, right? I'm like now you're making me think of something else again. Like here's the other part too. Like I, I'm going to Hawaii and then I'm going to Japan. So in Hawaii, it's in the 80s. In Japan, it's in the 60s. Like it's I'm Ooh. gonna have to take two. Like because it's fall. Two different outfits. Yeah. It's fall in Japan, which is beautiful in Japan. From what everybody said, like November is a great time to go. You see the changing of the leaves, all the kind of stuff. All the, it's beautiful. But beautiful. again, it's a completely different climate than Hawaii. Right. Which is tropical. Yeah. You know. Yeah, your packing's going to be fun. How many su suitcases are you bringing? <laughs> two. I'm going to make it with two. Um, I, I, I've we'll done see. This, I know. I've done this enough times. I was like, I'll just do laundry. You know, I'll be all right, and I'll I'll bring another. Like we talked about before, I'll bring a duffel with me so I can bring stuff home. Um, but, I, you know, that was the other thing, too. I'm like, I'm glad I went and checked my seats because I picked seats for 
all of my flights except for one. I thought I picked all my seats and I didn't. And one of them had me on a the flight that was from Japan to like Seattle on the way home, had me in the middle seat. I was like, oh no, hell no, we're not doing this. So Good I thing you checked that. Yeah, I upgraded. I was like, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're not doing that. I'm not sitting in the middle of, of four people for however long it is, like 10 hours or something. Like, no. Mm -mm. So where'd you move yourself to? Do you go uh, aisle or window? Aisle. I always go aisle. So it's aisle, and it's not business class, but it's the one like priority, like right below them. So I like aisle too. Them. Yeah, I'm always on the aisle because then I can get up and walk around. I can go to the bathroom, all that kind of stuff. Um, I I think some people probably sleep better when they can lean against the, the window, but I don't really have an issue with that. I don't, so. I don't sleep on planes anyway. It's like you can never get comfortable. I'm the same way. However, I feel like this will be different just because it's going to be such a long flight. I think yeah. I'll be able to sleep. So. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hopefully I'll be able to. Hopefully, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, way, hopefully yeah. be able yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited so. for you, and you're so close, and I'm so I excited know. to see all your updates. And uh, it's well, like, I'm excited to get to Florida this week and see Jamie in person because I haven't seen her in person since August. A couple since of I, yeah, yeah, since Nashville. I haven't seen yeah. her because she didn't go to math or didn't go to North Americans. Mm -mm. So I haven't seen her since August. So I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, I would change so much since I've seen her last in person. So that'd yeah. be good for you too. Mentally, you know, 100%. how it is always getting in front of your coach in person or getting on a FaceTime call, whatever, and getting that reassurance and knowing that they're seeing you move and live. And when they feel good about it, yeah, you leave and you're like, okay, whatever bikini bitch thought I had or <laughs> yes. doubt I had or whatever. They just saw me and told me I'm good. So yep. I'm just going to ride that wave. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and I also said this about like, I think I'm going to feel a lot better after Olympia anyway, just because I feel like they're going to reward fuller rounder physiques. So if they do that, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to worry too much about the conditioning part anymore. You know no, what I mean? Like, Cause you know, that's, you're bringing it. Yeah. Cause I can do the fuller thing. Um, and I'll still need thing. probably the fuller thing, you know, but my, always the concern is, okay, can I bring my hamstrings and tie it up? That's always the concern. I think that's probably a concern for 99% of bikini girls at this point. You know what I mean? So if they, if they reward that fuller rounder look, I'm like, all right, we're good. We're good. Yep. It's <laughs> just about getting lean enough so you could fill that's it right. out the way you want to. But Which I, you know, tissue, I, yeah. I wouldn't be too worried about that. And again, this morning, like I was posing and I was like, okay, I see it now. Like it's there. Like I'm, I'm even like, we talked about this last week. You got to look worse before you look better. Like yeah. I actually felt flat this morning. You know what I mean? Well, I was going to so, say the fact that you liked your video mm -hmm. first thing in the morning is huge for you. Yeah. And well, I, I like, I like being able to see that I'm, I look flat because that's where I should be right now. Even though it's not the best look, I still with I lines see it. Correct. Yes. I can see it. I'm like, okay, my hamstrings are coming in and even still, like I was telling you, I'm like, I'm not shaking and jiggling when I move all those kinds of things. So it tells me it's good. I'm tight. Yeah. But you know, it's, that's, it's, it's a, it's a hard, it's, a, it is. You're doing a really good job though. You're doing a good job at navigating it. <laughs> Listen, oh we God. all go through it. We all go through it. I was there. I was there last week. I totally get it. Totally yeah. get it. But that's well, where you just been there. have you, yeah, you know, and that's it. just, you rely on your coach and rely on your photos, you know, try yep. not to get, get caught up in those data points and just look at the photos, you know, yep. am I lean enough? Am I tight enough? Am I full enough? Whatever. And yep. just try to get that accurate to depiction of what you're trying to translate to stage. Yes, absolutely. So, um, don't get in your brain. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like the last, I would say the last three weeks, really, you got to turn your brain off. You just got to turn it off. Yes. Yes. You know, it's just like, go into just, robot mode. Yeah. And that's why I said, I was like, I'm just scheduling out every single moment of every single day of all the little things that I got to do. And it just is what it is. And you know, that way you don't get too caught up in it. Like I make sure I get up every morning. The first thing I do is I go pose while my coffee's brewing, I go pose and then I have my coffee and then I go in and do what business stuff I got to do. And then I go in and do my, my training and then I do go do my cardio and then I go do more business stuff and I do more cardio and it's boom, 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 boom. You just, you just become a robot. You just robot. do it. But that's what also day, keeps you your stress it. low because you yeah. are expecting the same outcome. You know, that's why people 
with this rash thing, everybody's like messaging me like, what did you do different? I'm like, literally nothing. I literally yeah. wake up just like you. I wake up, mm -hmm. do my photos, my coffee's like I, I do the same exact thing every single day. But yep. that's what keeps me less stressed and keeps my variables consistent. And yep. the higher you go in this sport, the more regimented you kind of get, you find your flow. Um, but when you're, you know, if you're an amateur and you're kind of new to the sport and watching this, you don't really have your flow yet. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. I just had this conversation with an athlete over the weekend that, you know, prep to prep, my routine changed. Yeah. And last year's prep, I would wake up and not touch my computer for an hour and I would journal in the morning and read a book. Now I do that stuff in the middle of the day toward the night to kind of turn yeah. my brain down this prep. But in last prep, it was always first thing in the morning, but that doesn't, didn't work for me this season. So each season too, it's going to change. You kind of have to That's go right. with the flow of your own life and your own responsibilities and what your kids are doing, blah, 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 and kind of mm -hmm. figure out what works best for you this season or this That's time right. in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So any closing, um, don't be bikini bitch thoughts that we haven't covered so far. <laughs> the only thing that I like to remind people is that I, uh, you know, very, this very simple phrase prep is a privilege, you yes. know? So remember that as athletes, um, we are choosing to do this sport. So that means we cho we choose to do two hours of cardio a day if that's the case. We choose to be low on calories. We choose to do everything that is hard about this sport. And a part of that is being mental too. Mm -hmm. But um, I like to just leave it off with be mindful of those around you. You know, they didn't choose this sport. They're, yeah. you know, helping support you, hopefully. Oops, I don't know why someone is calling. There we go. Um, they're ho they're uh, hopefully supporting you. But, you know, try not to take it out on them. And, you know, when you're deep, deep in that moodiness and things like that, try not to take it out on those around you or just be mm -hmm. mindful about how you're responding to others because this is a privilege that we get That's to right. do this sport. It is a very expensive sport. It's expensive monetary wise, it's expensive time wise. And I think that you should really put 100% into the prep and what you're doing. And a part of that is keeping your mentality right so that you're enjoying the experience and you're enjoying the journey along the way. Absolutely. And I agree with that. Like the prep is the privilege thing is a big deal. Um, if we're always complaining about this, then why are we doing it? You know, that is probably one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to the sport is when all people do is complain about the cardio and complain about the diet and complain about the train. It's like, then don't do it. Yeah. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. If it's that much of a pain for you, it's not meant for you. Right. right. It 100. And I tell myself this all the time. Like I literally tell myself this daily. I'm like, I am so lucky to be able to have to suffer like this. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm what choosing to suffer. Yeah, I'm choosing to do this. I'm choosing to suffer. Like I'm choosing to 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 hate cardio. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to do that. But you're you know? showing up anyway. Yeah. And absolutely. being better for it. And I'm like and I'm and I'm blessed. I'm like I'm going to get to go to freaking Japan to compete as like a professional athlete. How freaking cool is that? How many people can yeah. say that in their life? Like, I don't yeah. even care. Like, people are like, I don't care about the placings. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm like, nobody goes into a show to win or lose. We already talked about all that stuff. I get that. But I'm just saying, as a, in general, like, it's a privilege to be able to say that I can do that. You know what just I mean? Just be able to move your body. I mean, let's yeah. just think about all the people that can't even exercise or that had a life-changing injury and yes. they can't do a sport that they love anymore. So, you know, remember those things at the end of the day that we are just blessed to be able to go move our body, you know, yes. and be able to be active and yep. choose to do this sport. Absolutely. You're a hundred percent correct. Right. And all the beautiful places that competing takes us mentally and physically, right. You're going to Tokyo and Hawaii in a couple weeks. Holy shit. Like that's, that's incredible. really incredible. Awesome. These are going to be yeah. life changing trips for you and you're competing and stepping on stage, yeah. you know? Yep. Just, I, I have goosebumps. I'm so excited for you. And it's, it's, I, I don't know about you because, you know, Drew's also done the NASCAR thing and all that stuff too, but my husband has also competed at a very high level as far as wrestling and stuff like that's concerned. So he understands like where I am in my, in my space right now and in my mental space and just, you know, every day he's telling me how beautiful I am and stuff like that. And I'm you know, coming back with stupid comments. I, I probably saw my stories of the day, just stupid comments and stuff. But at the same time, like he's just trying to be very um, 
encouraging about the whole thing too, because he understands that this is really cool. You know what I mean? And it's a really yeah. cool experience and, and that this is something that I'm going to be, re- be able to remember for the rest of my life. And he's like, I see how hard you're working and I see how much effort you're putting into all this stuff. And I just think it's really awesome that you're doing that and all that kind of stuff too. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, he got to, he, he's competed like, in Russia and all this kind of stuff for, for um, wrestling and everything. So he's got a chance to do all that stuff and everything. So, um, you know, he's like, this is the stuff that you're going to remember forever, you know? And he's like, I'm just, I'm just happy to be alongside to watch you do it. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's also really cool to have somebody in your life that's, that's, that's supportive like that too, you know, and, and, and be thankful for that kind of thing as well. So. And reminding um, you of that perspective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Drew says, yeah. you know, Drew, especially over the last week, I'm so proud of you. I know you're so tired right now. You got it. Keep going. You know, and it's just those little comments that make you go, okay, I'm seen. Yes. I'm heard. Yep. And I'm going to keep going, yep. you know, and mm-hmm. it, that matters. It means something for it sure. Does. Absolutely. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, whatever happens, they don't care what happens to you on stage so much as they care about you personally as and a that person. you, yeah, that you have a, ha, reach your goals and that you have a good time and you enjoy yourself and you accomplish your dreams and all those kinds of things. They could care less if you win or lose, but they're there for you regardless. And they, they see, cause they see you day in and day out and what you do day in and day out to try to reach these goals, you know, whatever That's your it. goal may be whatever your goal may be. And they're just happy to, to be there. Like I said, to be there to support, to support you and lift you up when you need it. You know? That's so. it. Yeah. Ugh. So don't be, a, don't be a bikini bitch. <laughs> don't be a bikini bitch. <laughs> and we're not, and we're going into Olympia week. I know. I can't believe it. It's, um, it's nice that it's coming back to like this time frame. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Me too. I'm, I'm so. excited about that too. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. do an in-person pod yes. on, Sunday. on Sunday. Yep. Yep. Okay. What's your schedule look like on Sunday? What does your day, day look like on the Sunday? The only thing I want to do is go to brunch. Okay. So we can do it after because I don't, I don't even know what time I fly out, but not till after uh, that, the afternoon. So, um, Perfect. so yeah, we'll figure, we'll figure that out. I mean, we'll see each other while we're there in Orlando and everything too. And, um, but we'll do it after, after brunch. That, that's what we'll plan on. Cause maybe I'll get my Perfect. cardio in or something like that for you. <laughs> Perfect. I'm yeah, sure. Sunday, I'm sure I'll have Sunday. more. <laughs> Sunday we were like coming back from class. She's like this time next weekend, you're going to be drinking some orange juice and eating a pancake. And I was like, Oh, speak my love language. I yes, know, right? You. Oh, shit. I just freaking pulled my... I got so excited I pulled my earbuds out. Like, time to go. I know. Breakfast is my favorite thing, so I totally understand the, the brunch thing. Oh, Breakfast so is my, yum. my favorite meal. Yeah, 100%. So oh, yum. Pancakes and everything. Mm-hmm. All right, awesome. Well, I will see you in just a few short days. And, yes, um, I'll see you in a couple days. I know. It's coming up quick. So, And I'll see all of you on the pod on Sunday. Yes. And if Olympia you're going to the Olympia, come say hello and say hi to us and, you know, tell yes, us what please. topics you want us to cover and all that kind of thing, too. Maybe we'll see you on Sunday while we're shooting or something like that. Yeah. So, come see yeah. me at Meet the Olympians. I have my autograph cards. Um, so make sure you guys come and get one. Come get a photo. Yeah. If you guys see me out and about, I, lo- I look very intense all the time. Like, I'm always on a mission. But... I am very, very open to photos and hanging out and talking to you guys. I just like to say that because I do. I always look like I'm like running and I'm on a mission. No, I have the, I the time the I am heading somewhere, but I'll, I like to stop and yeah. hang out with you. I always guys. have the RBF face. I'm like, I swear it's just me thinking. Exactly. I'm, not, I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not a bitch. It's just I always got a thousand like things going yeah. through my mind and where I'm going and do, uh, I, I don't know about you. I'm the bag lady. I always got 5,000 bags yes. in my hands. Yeah. So, but mm-hmm. always feel free to stop me if you see me out, especially this weekend. I would love to take photos of you guys. I love all the messages that we get about yes. how much you guys love the podcast. So I just can't wait to meet all of you in person and hug you and squeeze you and take all the photos. I just can't wait. <laughs> and on that note, here we are out for episode 10. Um, yeah, subscribe, like, comment, and come see us if you like. Let's go. Bye. <laughs>